This is Bellevue Now, a public affairs show about issues that impact our community. I'm your host, Lenka Wright. As we get into the summer season, there's typically an increased risk for wildfires due to hot weather and lack of rain. And one city ordinance that everyone should be aware of that reduces fire risk and improves safety concerns fireworks. Specifically, all fireworks are illegal in Bellevue and areas serviced by the Bellevue Fire Department. Joining me now is Fire Marshal Ken Carlson, and we also have Police Public Information Officer Seth Tyler. Well, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So, Ken, why the concern over all types of fireworks, from sparklers to M80 firecrackers? From the fire department's perspective, it's really about the fire risk. You know, around the 4th of July is, is always our driest period of the year and the potential for fire and, and fire spread is real. Um, Bellevue is known for being a city in the park. We've got a lot of forested areas and green belts, and you know, the potential at that time of year for fire to spread into those areas is really significant. Um, beyond that is you know, things that are airborne and land on a shake roof. Um, that's a, a real risk. And, and beyond the fire department's perspective is the citizen's perspective. Fireworks are illegal, right? So why are people still doing this? It impacts my life, uh, my ability to sleep. If I have pets, I have to sedate them or keep them indoors. So depending on your perspective, you know, there's a myriad of reasons why we need to pay attention to this. And then in March, the city council approved increasing the penalties for illegal fireworks use. So can you tell me a little bit about the increased fines and the reasons behind them? Certainly. For a number of years, we've had increasing level of complaints about why people continue to use fireworks even though they're, they're illegal. We really have stepped up our outreach efforts to make sure that people know that they're not legal. We've had banners at fire stations and pedestrian overpasses. We've put signs up in front of schools. We've used electronic message boards, utility billing inserts, um, articles in it's your city. And we've partnered with Bellevue PD to do emphasis patrols around the 4th of July. Now, if we have caught somebody in the past, the maximum penalty is $100, um, which hasn't been much of a deterrent, frankly. So we asked city council to increase those fines to $1,000 that would really get people's attention and make them think twice about, do I really want to do this? Um, because if I get caught, that's going to bite. Yeah, and Seth, from the police perspective, how big a problem is illegal fireworks use in Bellevue? Well, as Ken mentioned, it's big enough that we're going to have extra patrols out uh, with the fire department as we have in years past, specifically responding to complaints of illegal firework use in Bellevue. Um, to give you a little perspective, last year alone, just on the 4th of July, the Bellevue Police and Fire Department responded to 44 complaints of illegal fireworks use, and that was just on the 4th of July. So we'll be out, and, and as Ken mentioned, you're looking at a fine of up to $1,000 if you're caught using any type of fireworks in the city of Bellevue. And that is if you don't cause any damage or injury. If you cause damage or injury, you're looking at potential civil and criminal liabilities. And Ken, from your experience as the fire marshal, why should the public leave the fireworks to the professionals? Fireworks are frankly dangerous. Um, just last year in Washington, there was 26 injuries that resulted in amputations. Do you really want to risk using fireworks um, and not know what's going to happen with these things? Or would it be smarter to leave it to the professionals? So you don't want to cause a fire. You don't want to you know, cause injury to yourself or somebody else. Um, we're just advocating that you need to leave it to the professionals that are trained in how to use fireworks. And how can the public report illegal fireworks use? If they are seeing illegal fireworks, have, we're asking that they call 911 and be as specific as you can about where the location of the, the use is. Um, because frankly, after dark, it's pretty tough to respond to fireworks in the area. Um, you know, beyond reporting, um, we'd like people to be proactive. So if you know somebody in your neighborhood that's used fireworks in the past, if you'd like them to know that they're illegal, you know, and you're okay with that, have a conversation with them. Um, we have signs that, that we would like people to host if they're interested, that they can park in their front yard or you know the entrance to a neighborhood that helps get that, get that message out. And so. how would someone get the sign? Should they contact? Contact Bellevue Fire Department and we'd be happy to arrange getting this in, in their hands. Great, and Seth, you know, fireworks are often associated with Independence Day. So what are some ways that folks can celebrate the 4th of July safely? 
Yeah, we're not trying to tell people not to watch fireworks. Uh, there's a number of public displays that we're asking that people attend. Um, the largest one in Bellevue, of course, is the Bellevue Family Fourth, which is at Downtown Park and that will uh, begin uh, around 9 p.m. And so what we're asking is that people head down to either Downtown Park or to any of the other public displays. Um, they can go online, but there are displays at uh, Cozy Cove, Lake Sammamish, and of course, Bellevue and Seattle and other jurisdictions where they're organized, they're supervised by the police and fire departments, and it's a safe place to bring your family to watch a professional fireworks display. Well, thank you both to you, Seth and Ken, for getting the word out that all fireworks are illegal in Bellevue, but there are ways to still celebrate safely. Correct. All right. Well, <laughs> coming up next with recent changes in China's recycling program, find out what you can still recycle and how to do so the right way. Stay with us on Bellevue Now. Are you looking for summer fun? Try one of Bellevue's really fun day camps. There are lots of fun camps. Sport camps. Theater camps. Kelsey Creek Farm camps. Adventure camps for kids and teens. Art camps. Even skateboarding. And rock climbing. Find out more and sign up for a great summer day camp today. Welcome back to Bellevue Now, I'm Lenka Wright. Recently, China enacted stricter recycling rules, which are impacting the local recycling market. And it's especially being felt in the recycling of mixed paper, such as magazines, junk mail, and office paper. With more on the recycling front is Bellevue Utilities Conservation and Outreach Program Administrator, Jennifer Goodhart. Jennifer, it's great to have Thank you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So with the China recycling market essentially closed to the U.S., should residents stop putting mixed paper in their recycling cart? No, residents should continue recycling mixed paper as they usually have, but th this is an opportunity to actually really think about recycling right and um, making sure that those paper items are dry and don't have any food residue on them. And another thing is to reduce the amount of paper you have to put in the recycling bin by Call it, you know, doing this junk mail. Um, you can stop junk mail and you can also stop catalogs deliveries from, to your home. Yeah, and you had mentioned as far as contamination, that yeah. it seems to be an issue. Exa uh, for example, jars still having sauce or food in them. Uh, what can someone do to avoid having that type of issue? Right. They can rinse everything. Um, if it has food, had had food in it, they need to rinse it out and practice um, responsible recycling is the best way to go. Um, residents get a guide every year from the city. Um, it should have hit mailboxes um, early, I think in February. And um, this is what it looks like to single family homes. And it goes over everything that you can put in each of the carts that, that you have at your home. And so if you just follow these guidelines, then there should be no problems. Clean, empty, and dry. And then something else I came across that the public should avoid is what those in the industry call yeah. wishful recycling. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is wishful recycling? Right. That's when somebody thinks they have something and really hopes and wishes that it's recyclable and they just put it in the blue bin. Um, and what it does is actually causes a huge amount of problems at the recycling facilities. And some items that I've heard that have come across those, those belts are like hoses, Christmas lights, even animal carcasses, which is disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, there's bowling balls, medical syringes. I mean, just a million. If you could think of something, it's probably come across the bin. Diapers, pet waste, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. So those things, you know, just stick to the guidelines and it, we shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, and you brought with you some items that are recyclable. Right. So let's kind of go over what's the right. right way to recycle and what you okay. should avoid doing. Yeah, the main things that you definitely can recycle, like we just talking about mixed paper. We've got, I mean, this is just an example of all the junk mail. I need to do, stop my junk mail. I got a lot yesterday. Um, tin and aluminum cans. We've got aluminum can. Um, clean glass. But you, if you get something like this and mm -hmm. you're just like, don't want to rinse it out, throw it in the garbage because it will contaminate. This takes, it's a long journey for this to make it to the end market and it would be completely coated in, it would be a hazardous material at the time it gets to the end market. So rinse your glass, 
And one other thing I wanted to say is that things like greasy pizza boxes, um, napkins that you you know have like food on them, they can all go into your green organics cart. You don't, but the, it contaminates the blue cart. So just right. keep that in mind. Yep. So what else can someone do to help on the recycling front and avoid things yeah. from going to the landfill? Right. Um, something that people, anyone can do is reduce and reuse. Those come first. It's reduce, reuse, recycle. And then there's rethink. But um, so use a reusable coffee mug. I brought an example. This can reduce a ton of waste if you drink a lot of coffee. Um, reusable water bottles. You can use reusable sporks. They make reusable straws now. Reusable bags like this. I mean, there's tons of ways that you can can reduce um, your impact. And something else that the public should be aware of coming up in July is uh, a latex paint recycling event that yeah. Bellevue's Utilities is hosting. Tell me a little bit about the event. Yeah, this event is really it's really exciting that we are able to now in Washington actually recycle latex paint. Um, we haven't ever actually been able to do that. Um, this is a new company that moved to Washington called Green Sheen that takes paint, old paint, you know, remnants of paint in cans and mixes them by color and then resells. Um, they probably have a process. Then they resell it to the public. So it's full loop recycling. And um, we have the event on July 14th at Sammamish High School. And there's like small fees associated per the you know, size of your container. And we, um, we actually have flyers about the event. I'll hold one up real quick. Um, they're at all the paint sto local paint stores. And then I think um, we'll have a close up of it so you can see the details. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Jennifer, for stopping by and sharing with us these recycling tips. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, for the latest news about our city, be sure to visit us online at BellevueWA.gov. Until next time, I'm Lenka Wright. Have a great day.